Hello, I'm Richard McPherson. I'm the Chief Instructor at Let's Ride Motorcycle Training. And in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to look after your bike. Okay, let's talk about the maintenance of the bike. Now, don't worry, you don't need to be a mechanic to look after these things, but the basics we can certainly do ourselves just to keep the bike in tip-top shape. So there are daily checks that we can do and there are weekly checks that we can do. Now to help us with the dailies, we're gonna use an acronym, uh, a word, and each letter of that word will stand for a check that we need to do on the bike each day. So let's go through the, that, that, that word. So the word is BOLTS, B-O-L-T-S-S, -S, two S's at the end. B standing for brakes. So brakes are quite useful things to have working. So let's make sure these, these work correctly. So this is a very easy check. So we just want to get the bike off the stand. And all we're going to do here is we're just going to roll the bike forward and apply the front brake. Yep, that's all good. And then go back, apply the back brake. And now we know our brakes are working. I would definitely do that if I left my bike parked out on the street overnight because I have heard horror stories of tow rags coming along and cutting brake lines. So do make sure your brakes are functioning. So that's B for brakes. O is for oil. Now, with the four-stroke engines, like the, the YBR here, the, the oil check is more of a weekly check because it doesn't burn through a lot of oil. But for the two-stroke bikes, if you're on a two-stroke scooter, for example, definitely check the oil levels every day. You'll find on the scooters, um, the reservoir is usually located under the saddle. So you just need to pop up the seat and you'll see your oil reservoir. You can open up the cap, have a peer in and make sure you've got plenty of oil. What I would also suggest with the scooters is keep, keep a little canister of two-stroke oil in uh, the bucket there, the seat bucket, and that way uh, you can just top it up nice and easily there. Because with the two-strokes, if, if they get dangerously low, they can seize the engines quite badly. Uh, these ones, the four-strokes burn very little oil. Uh, so it's more of a weekly check. Okay, so let me show you how to check the oil on the four strokes. So you'll either have a spyglass, which is a little window that sits at the bottom of the, the engine here, and you can see the oil levels, or you'll have a dipstick. So you need to get the bike upright, so all the, the oil is sat level. Um, it does depend on the bike. Check your own, owner's manual, whether it's good to run up the engine first or just to have a cold engine. It does depend on the bike. Um, so make sure it's upright, let the oil settle. And with a spyglass, you would simply look at the glass window at the bottom here and make sure the oil is between the low and the high mark. But this bike has got a dipstick. So much like a car, we'd unscrew this cap here and there's a, there's a stick attached to it. We bring it out, just clean it off with a rag, dunk it back in the gearbox, bring it back out and then make sure the oil level is between the high and the low mark on the stick there and then top up if necessary. So oil check. L is for lights. So it's a legal requirement that all your lights must be working. So we'll just go around it. Now with the, the most bikes now, the, the lights come on automatically, but if you do have a separate on-off switch, then make sure the lights are on. I, I'd advise having your lights on all the time anyway. It's a great way of increasing um, visibility to yourself. So I would just go around the bike. So we start off at the front of the bike. So I get the engine running. I check that the dip beam is working and I just make sure the main beam is working as well. And while I'm here, I might as well just check the indicators both sides too, so make sure they're both working. Then I just wander around the back of the bike and then I just make sure the tail light is working and then the brake light, but with both brakes. So I check the front and I just check the back as well, make sure the brake light is working. And again, while I'm at the back here, I can check the indicators both sides too. So a nice, quick, easy check there. T. T is for tyres, so there's a few things we need to check on tyres. Now tyres are extraordinarily important. These things are keeping us on the road. We've got to make sure they're in good condition. Okay, so the first thing is to check the tyre tread depth. Now the legal minimum for a motorcycle tyre, the depth of that tread pattern must be no less than a millimetre. So a millimetre is your absolute limit. Now what is the purpose of tread depth in the first place? Why do we have tread on a tyre? Surely more rubber will give you more grip. So look at motorcycle races, they have slick tyres, there's no tread in them at all. Well, the whole purpose of tread is to displace water. 
So if you go through water, the water goes into the channels in the tread and it is then dispersed through the side. It pushes the water out of the way so the rubber can hit the deck. And if it's less than a millimeter, then there's a real danger of aquaplaning and losing control of your bike. Now with motorcycle tires, or in fact car tires as well, I believe, uh, you have tread wear indicators built into them. So what we do is we just find, look on the side wall of the tire and it will say TWI, meaning tread wear indicator, and then an arrow pointing in. So we just follow the arrow in, and then in the tread pattern itself, there is a little hump of rubber, which is exactly one millimeter high. So when your main tread wears down and then sits flush with that little bump of rubber in the tire tread, in the tire tread pattern, that is your limit. You must replace the tire. I, honestly, I wouldn't get it, let it get that low. Um, so if it's getting close to that bump, I would replace the tire. You want tread to get rid of water. So that's how you check the tread wear depth there. If you don't have a TWI mark, uh, you can get a little tread wear indicator, a little device which you put into the tread pattern and it measures it for you. But most tires do have that TWI mark there. The next thing to do is make sure your tire pressures are correct. Super important. Um, the bike's incredibly susceptible to the wrong tire pressure. If it's too low, the bike wallows around in the corners. It feels horrible. If it's too high, then you're sitting on a tiny ridge of rubber and it can be very skittish handling and you lose, you lose uh, uh, traction levels as well. So consult your owner's manual. Sometimes it's written on the back of the bike. Get yourself a decent tire pressure gauge. Uh, locate the valve of the tire and just check the tire pressures. And make sure that they're at the correct level there. So that's very important. Final thing with the tires is make sure it's all in good condition. So there's nothing stuck in the tire, no punctures, uh, no cracking, no perishing of the rubber, any bulges in the sidewalls. So you hit, hit a pothole, for example, it can distort the sidewalls there and you get a weak spot. So make sure it's all in good condition. So super important that you look after your tires there. So that's T for tires. And then we have two S's. So uh, the first S is steering. So we just got to make sure there's no cables or anything snagging there. Nice smooth movement. And while we're, while we're doing that, we can just feel it. If you feel any sort of grinding or knocking noises coming from the headstock here, it means that your bearings are wearing out and they need to be replaced. So nice smooth movement. So nothing snagging. So you've got full lock to full lock. So that's dead easy. So that's the first S. And the next S is suspension. So what do we need suspension for? Well, primarily it's to give a nice comfortable ride for us. But it's also there to keep the wheels tracking on the road surface in the corners. So when you're banked over, if you hit a bump, you want the suspension just to absorb that energy away from the tire so it doesn't overload the tire. If you have no working suspension, you hit a big bump, it could, I mean, you have to be really unlucky, but it could overload that tire and it could start sliding out on you. So that suspension is just bouncing up and down, absorbing all that energy away from the bike there. Now suspension which works correctly should compress and rebound smoothly just the once when I try it. So I'm going to put the front brake on, push down and you'll see that it compresses and then rebounds just the once. If it's bouncing, that's not good. Okay, it usually means you haven't got enough oil in there. Or if it's rock solid, then you've probably got too much oil. Maybe the springs are knackered, that kind of thing. So down and up once. Also, you could have a quick look on the fork stanchions here, make sure there's no oil leaking out, which means that your seals have uh, broken, which is, can be very, very bad. You obviously lose performance in the suspension, but that oil can then run down onto your calipers and your discs and make life very interesting when you try to start braking. So check your suspension. The same with the back, you can just bounce uh, down and up again, and you'll see it just compresses and rebounds just the ones there. So that is it for the daily. So it's very, very easy. It won't take you more than a couple of minutes just to quickly run through it all. So bolts, B for brakes, O for oil, L for lights, T for tires, S for steering, S for suspension. So that's daily. So what can we do on the weeklies? So we've got to get a little bit more involved with the weeklies. Uh, so what could we do? So if it's the four stroke, maybe look at the oil, which we may have not have done on the dailies. Keep the bike clean. They obviously look a lot nicer when they're clean, but you know these things do vibrate quite a bit. So when you're cleaning your bike, you can just start to feel if uh, anything's coming a little bit loose. So that's good in that respect. <clears throat> we could check brake uh, uh, Sorry, brake. We can take brake pads. 
these do, do wear down so with the disc brakes you want a little torch and you want to sort of fire it down between the disc and the caliper there and you can see how much meat you've got in the pad there and there should be wear indicators on the pads the little grooves in the pads and they'll get shorter and shorter and shorter and when they disappear it's time to replace your pad there don't ever let it get metal to metal you can destroy your caliper and your disc and they're extraordinarily expensive to replace a brake pad is what 15 pounds whereas your calipers and discs could be hundreds of pounds so look after your pads there with the drum brakes they've got an arrow system uh, so you'll see that there's an arrow on the drum and when you put the pedal down you see the arrow moving in a in a, in a little mark that's an arc as long as the arrow stays within that arc the pad's okay but as soon as that arrow comes out of that arc it's time to replace the the drum pads there okay so check the brake pads uh, next thing we can look at is the chain so not an issue on the automatics um, but with the chain they do start stretching and they start lo losing lubrication so make sure it's at the correct adjustment. So again, check your owner's manual, see how much play you should have at the center point of the chain. On these bikes, it's about uh, 25 to 30 millimeters of play, but no more than that. And then, so adjust it as per the owner's manual. It's, a, it's an easy task, don't need to worry about. Just need some basic tools, which quite often come with the bike, but it's very easy to adjust the chain. Um, and make sure it's well lubricated as well. So get some decent uh, non-fling chain lube uh, and just, lube it up every single week you might have to do it more than that if it's really bad weather so lots of wet weather riding you can wash the, all the grease out of the chain so lube it up if you keep it well lubricated it performs a lot better and the life will be extended to by two or three times okay so keep it well lubricated so if you have hydraulic brakes you might want to just check the hydraulic fluid levels so we can do that using a spyglass so we've got the reservoir here and on this side of the reservoir there's a little spyglass with a lower mark and so, so again get the bike level and make sure there's a little air bubble in there make sure that air bubble is above the low mark if it needs topping up it actually tells you what brake fluid to use on here and this says use only dot three or dot four brake fluid so just make sure make sure you've got plenty of hydraulic fluid now it's a it's a sealed system so you shouldn't be losing brake fluid what you will see is that bubble does go down slightly as you use the brakes because as the pad wears out then more of the piston goes in or rather out should i say therefore more more fluid is being drawn out of the reservoir here okay so don't panic if you see it going down a little bit but it should never go below that low mark okay now that's, so that's pretty much it there's uh, nothing else we really need to worry about from a from amateur mechanic kind of level uh, anything more serious goes wrong with it you, you take it to your dealer but no, do look after these things these things will look after you as long as you look after them uh, we do not want to neglect things like brake pads and chains um, because these things can bite if they go wrong so you know spend a bit of time each morning with your with your bolts check and at the weekend yeah, give your bike a nice clean and just go over the weekly checks as well